Hey, welcome back to the Personality Hacker Podcast. My name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. This week, we're continuing a four-part series on how all of the personality types in the Myers-Briggs system show up when they're healthy. We get a lot of comments and questions about how do types show up when they're at their best. You know, you guys talk a lot about how to grow yourself or how to watch out for blind spots or the parts of our personalities that aren't doing that well. But what is it, you know, paint us a picture, show us what types look like when they're doing our best. So we want to cast a narrative today. We want to talk about how the IP types show up when they're healthy. We're talking about ISTP, ISFP, INTP, and INFP today on Personality Hacker. And one thing we've noticed going through this series is that showing up as your best self as each of these types doesn't mean that you're fitting a stereotype necessarily. In fact, What's great about talking about the types when they show up at their best or at their most healthy is we get to bypass stereotypes. Yeah. And we just get to talk about how they're going to show up in their behavior and some of the ways that they look at the world and their perspectives. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to fit any particular you know trend with that type. What's great about talking about the four IP types is there's one characteristic that seems to run through all four of these types when they're at their healthiest. Because all four types lead with a dominant function or what we call a driver process of either introverted thinking or introverted feeling, and our nicknames for that are are accuracy and authenticity, these are decision-making processes, but they're introverted decision-making processes, which means that the criteria for whether or not something is true, valid, right, you know, follows a, a series of should statements about the world Because they're introverted, it means that the qualifications for whether or not something is good or bad, right or wrong, makes sense, feels right, etc., is entirely subjective to the individual. Yeah. There's nothing that they can really point to in the outside world that, that, yeah, I mean, maybe they might have an argument that is a proof for why they feel the way that they feel or why they're thinking the way that they're thinking. But fundamentally, it comes down to what strikes them on an individual level as being right or true. And so... There's a quality around IPs, all four IP types, that when they're at their healthiest, that is a very centered process for them. Mm-hmm. They feel very grounded in it. Because if you have a lot of quest- internal questioning as to whether or not something is right or wrong, that means you're going to feel like a lot of different you know, parts inside of you are pulling you in different directions. It, it makes you feel very uncentered, right? Like you have a lot of indecisiveness. There's a lot of questions about what you should be doing, how you should be going about things. And that lack of centeredness is oftentimes why IPs feel um, like, o- almost like they're unsure of what they should be doing. And they end up blasting the energy of that dominant process in in the direction of whatever comes into their their view. It's almost like a shotgun, right? Like, and, and, and let me give you an example of this. Uh, when somebody leads with the process of introverted thinking or accuracy, one of the ways that it shows up when it's not healthy, when it's not grounded, and this can happen with both ISTP and INTP types because both of those types lead with the driver process of introverted thinking or accuracy. What it can look like is they have to go prove to everybody how wrong they are. And so they're just waiting for an opportunity for somebody to come into their view, maybe online. They read a comment that sounds wrong to them and they've got to go tell that person how wrong they are, right? <laughs> and they just yeah. sort of crawl the internet to set the, you know, set everybody straight on how wrong they are all the time. And the same thing happens with people who lead with the process of introverted feelings. So this would be the the ISFP and the INFP types. And this is less about proving how everybody's wrong. This is more about the the feelings that they're feeling. If they're not in alignment, if they don't have like a feeling of control over that or a feeling of, of um, uh, groundedness or centeredness in their feelings, what that tends to look like is they're, they're looking for a reason why they're feeling the way they are. They haven't really found a, a way to, uh, to, to be in control of that or to feel like that's their purview or domain. Yeah. And so they're, they have a tendency to blast blame at other people. They're looking for who's responsible for the feeling that I'm feeling right now. 
Who's the person who's responsible for this? And so that's how they tend to blast things outward to others is that they they cast blame to others for why they're feeling the way they're feeling. And so, again, it's a matter of whatever, you know, like whatever is coming up for them in the moment, whatever's captured their attention and whoever is around while that thing has captured their attention, the, it gets a blast of that driver process. But when an IP is really developed, when they're really healthy, they no longer have to correct the world. They don't have to go through and tell everybody how wrong they are. And they no longer feel that other people are responsible for their emotional re- you know, reactions to things. And so there's a feeling of centeredness or groundedness that all the IP types have when they're at their healthiest. And it looks a little different depending upon which of the four types they are. And you know how that shows up for them is a little different. But that's one theme that's going to run through all four of these types is that feeling of groundedness, centeredness, and focus. You mentioned before you called it the single-minded determination. Yeah, yeah, single-minded determination, and and almost like setting a ship, you know, on the open sea on a course for where it's headed, on an autopilot for per se, or the navigation system, the compass setting for something. And I think IPs really benefit from compass setting and this single-minded focus. I, I, the other thing a lot of IPs struggle with, IFPs and ITPs, is this sense of motivation. How do I get myself motivated? to get up and get going and go for my dreams or my goals. And I think we're going to talk about some healthy expressions of how IPs show up that give them that motivation, that internal motivation where I think IPs are some of the the most unstoppable personality types. When they are on purpose or mission of something to accomplish, you have to kill them to stop them because they are just so motivated. And they struggle with that motivation, but once it's there, they're going for it. And they've got that compass set and they're clear on their intention and where they're headed. And I think that's really a, a healthy expression for IP. So let's let's start digging right into the two sensor types for IP. So the ISTP and the ISFP. Now, both of these types are going to share the, set, the same co-pilot process of what what is technically called extroverted sensing. We've nicknamed it sensation. But they have different drivers. Obviously, the ISTP drives and has the dominant process of introverted thinking. We've nicknamed it accuracy. And ISFPs lead with introverted feeling or authenticity. So the growth position for both types is going to be about that sensation process, about getting into their bodies, getting into the present moment, getting into the sensory experience of life, getting external, getting external of themselves, getting out and doing things, getting into action. This is the growth state for both ISPs in the Myers-Briggs system. Now, one of the things that you might want to do, what you are going to want to do as we talk about this, is head over to personalityhacker.com and just type into the search bar there, car model. It's going to bring up an article that talks about a system that we use or a framework we use for understanding personality types. It's a car model. It's a visual representation. And we're going to be talking about drivers and co-pilots and 10-year-olds in the backseat. It's going to be really helpful for you to have a visual representation of this in front of you and possibly even go back and listen to some of our podcasts around the car model and how we present personality types. It's a great framework for understanding this. It's going to be beneficial as we walk through and cast a narrative for how these types show up in a positive way. So let's start with ISTPs and the two ISP types. Now, one thing that is important to remember about both ISP types, ISTPs and ISFPs, is that while they have different driver processes, they share the same co-pilot and 10-year-old processes. So that means that their growth state is the same. And it also means that the tendency that, you know, we all, we basically all have a tendency to go to our 10-year-old in times of stress or defensiveness, rather, they're both going to have the same place that they go when they're trying to be defensive. So when they show up healthy, they show up in kind of a similar way because they've done the same style of growth in order to get there. So ISTPs, just like ISFPs, have a process that's technically called extroverted sensing as their co-pilot process, and we've nicknamed this sensation. Extroverted sensing is very much about being in touch with the world in real time. It's about using your senses to take in information, stimuli. It's about being connected with your body and understanding that your body is an extension of um, your mind and really being able to process sort of insane amounts of information in real time in the moment. So why would that be a growth phase for an ISTP? Well, 
just like we mentioned before, that dominant process of introverted thinking subjectively determines what makes sense to the individual. Anytime you're dealing with this level of subjectivity, even if introverted thinking is subjective in an analytical way and is looking for logic, is looking for things that make sense, even though it is looking for the logical conclusion, it's still subjectively logical. It's still what's logical to me as an individual. Well, if you don't take in information in the outside world around you, that can get pretty... It can look like a closed circuit loop. (laughs) It can look like, oh, this totally makes sense to me. So that must be how it is. And as I'm sure everybody has experienced, something can make complete and total sense to you. And then all of a sudden you pick up a new piece of information and it revolutionizes how you see that thing. It no longer makes complete and total sense. Now you have more information to work with and now something else makes sense. Well, that's why that co-pilot process is so important for a healthy ISTP, because that's your input mechanism. That's how you take what makes sense to you and then vet it in the outside world by looking around the world and going, hey, is the world matching this? Is it giving me feedback that supports my conclusion? Now, when an ISTP is not healthy, they'll bypass that and go to the 10-year-old process of introverted intuition or what we've nicknamed perspectives. And introverted intuition is fundamentally trying to find patterns, things that make sense in a, in a pattern recognition way. Now, pattern recognition means that you don't look at all the information. You look at parts of the information and then form a conclusion based on a projection of what could be, right? It's not dealing with what is, it's dealing with what could be. So when an ISTP doesn't go to their co-pilot process, they're not trying to seek input. They're just trying to find a pattern that will support the conclusion that their driver process already came to. Yeah. And that's why it creates that closed circuit loop. So one of the things that is very clear about ISTPs that are super healthy is that they don't shut off their input mechanisms. They are totally open to new information in the outside world. They are totally open to the information that's coming to them in real time. They won't shut that off. They will input, input, input. And then what ends up happening is the 10-year-old process, instead of you know, getting, we talk about how sometimes it can get paranoid or it can project a future that isn't true or it can be suspicious of loved ones. Instead of supporting erroneous conclusions that the driver process may have come to, instead it actually supplements the input mechanism of their, of their co-pilot of sensation and then understands a philosophy about life that is supported by the re- by real world experience. So instead of coming to a conclusion and then looking for information to support that conclusion, it goes the opposite direction. It gets information first and then tries to determine what that information could mean. What's the meaning of that? And, the, and so it provides insight. So ISTPs that are very healthy are single-minded focus, right? They're focused on the thing that is meaningful to their introverted thinking or accuracy driver. So they're not just going out and trying to prove the world wrong. They're not just blasting their conclusions out. They actually have a purpose. They're on purpose. And then they recalibrate their purpose when more information comes in that might put that purpose into question. They're open to new information. And so that ends up being, it ends up instead of causing indecisiveness, which can happen with an ISTP that's not healthy, what it does is it ends up creating more clarity. Yeah. It ends up creating more clarity, and so the purpose gets even clearer. And then once the information is brought in and they're and they're engaging in the outside world, they're doing stuff, they're making things happen, wisdom comes with that. Insightfulness comes with it. The ability to see into the future, even if it's a small amount into the future, some insight and projection comes. And so the ISTP just feels like somebody who's totally on game, totally on purpose, doesn't feel the need to correct everybody, doesn't feel the need to always be right, uh, doesn't feel cynical, right, is more open to how the world actually works, and then creates a healthy philosophy around that around what they have observed and how the world works. Yeah, I worked with an ISTP copywriter. So uh, he he was working with major internet companies to write email copy. He had actually decided on a very singular focus of only writing email copy. He didn't write copy for anything else, just email. So he's very focused. And he used metrics and real-world feedback to adjust 
his sales copy and emails that he would send out. So he wouldn't speculate on what should be working. He would always vet that against the actual numbers. He'd get reports back and he'd look at how many people clicked on certain links in email copy versus how many people opened the email versus how many people didn't open it versus how many people marked it as spam. You know, He would look at the numbers and he was very careful to always say, well, here's the reason why I'm making this decision. I would make it because this is how many this one opened. So I'm going to use that email in the future because it seems to resonate with people. It seems to work for people. And he'd keep vetting it against real world feedback. I worked with another copywriter at one point who wouldn't do that. They wouldn't look at the metrics to see what was working. They were they had read some books and some information around and they weren't an ISTP. They were a different personality type, but they weren't they were looking at things that should be working and they weren't vetting it against real world feedback and it wasn't working well for them. So it's a really good example of watching an ISTP use real time calibration and not just try to speculate on what should be working, but what is actually working. And that's what we're talking about that S that extroverted sensing process, that sensation process is what is it that's actually happening? Not what do you think is happening? Yeah, I have a an acquaintance who is an ISTP at the absolute top of her game. Like she was the world racquetball, women's world racquetball champion for a couple of years in a row. And she just was absolutely phenomenal at what she did. And she was a really cool person. Very chill, very neat, just like a pleasure to talk to. And it would it would surprise almost anybody to know the kind of trauma that she had gone through in order to get to where she was at. Before one of her, like the, I think it was like the first championship, the first world championship that she had entered, or maybe she was trying to defend her title, maybe it was the second one. She was jumped by a couple of um, people. I mean, the, the guys were hopped up on some drug. I don't know what they were hopped up on. And they beat her, stole everything that was on her, stole her phone, stole her money, stole all her jewelry, and beat her face into a place where like, it had basically collapsed her, um, her socket, her eye socket. And this was just maybe, I don't know, like a month before the championship. And then they left her there just to bleed out. I mean, I don't think that they left her to bleed out. I think they just left her because they weren't thinking that far ahead. So she ended up going to the championship game with her, like half her face bandaged. I mean, it was like a month or six weeks. I mean, it was not a lot of recovery time, but she was so focused on what she was doing. And she was so focused on the game and so focused on what was important to her that despite this experience that had happened to her, she was not going to let anything stop her. And when you talk to her, instead of being cynical, instead of being a victim or thinking poor me, she had created a philosophy of that is what happened. That was reality. She had to work with reality. And she didn't have, I mean, there was no bitterness there. So there was a there was an ability to create some insight around the situation. She wasn't resisting the reality of it. She just accepted it and then created a philosophy that made it okay and won her championship. And one of the ways that she said that, I mean, she didn't understand cognitive function. She didn't really understand typology. But when when questioned about her, like her modality or how she worked, she mentioned that she, like, I mean, her ability to see detail on the racquetball itself as it was coming to at her. And I think we've mentioned this before in previous podcasts because she's one of my favorite examples of an ISTP. I mean, she could just see like ridiculous detail on that racquetball. That's what she focused in on. And she used her her accuracy and sensation processes to just get super like, I mean, it was amazing. She could like, she focused on one of the letters on the word of the racquetball as, it, as she was playing, which I mean, when you see how fast the racquetball goes for like that level of sports, that's ridiculous. I have no clue how she could do that. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> it feels like it's hoodoo. a blur to me. Total hoodoo magic. But what she would do is just like Wayne Gretzky talks about uh, skating to where the puck is going. She had the ability to forecast where the ball was going and to be able to pick up, you know, like based on the physics that she was observing her and her opponents and the angle at which they had the racket ball or the, um, the, the racket itself, she could forecast in very, I mean, obviously this is super fast in short timelines, but this is a place that I believe her perspectives process, her forecasting ability showed up for her was to be able to project into like the next few seconds where the ball was going. And so, I mean, this was happening so quick in such real time. There's no way that you could possibly like full lay out all these processes. But because she was so focused and because she was so into like physically following through, 
using that sensation process, having no question about what she was, you know, doing and just practice, practice, practice. Her perspectives, 10 year old, that introverted intuition, 10 year old showed up in a very interesting ways, ways that served her as opposed to getting her in, caught into a loop where, you know, like we just talked about that closed circuit loop where you're just looking for where you're looking for patterns that will support your conclusions as opposed to using that pattern recognition ability to serve the sensation process to serve extroverted sensing so that you can you can be better at your performance so that you can have philosophies that serve you. And so I've noticed that ISTPs that are the healthiest at the top of their game, they're on purpose, they're chill, they have philosophies that serve them, they don't have an anxiety or anxiousness about them, that they're just doing their thing. And and there's a lot of there's a lot of just sort of, you know, a, a feeling of like that this is what is. And I'm going to accept it, and I'm just going to do the best that I can with it. Yeah, I think that anxiety is something that ISPs deal with. And, I, and let's let's tacked over here. Let's switch gears, I should say, over to the ISFP personality. And now they lead with a different function, like we talked about, introverted feeling, which is authenticity. We've nicknamed authenticity as their driver. Authenticity is about internal alignment, what feels right, what is you know what should we be doing in a situation. It's a lot of concern around ethics morality, things that we should be showing up to in the world as humanity. A lot of ISFPs are artists, writers, creators, but that's a stereotype, again, that we we put onto ISFPs. There are a lot of ISFPs that do a various amounts of work and interests. But what does a healthy ISFP look like? Again, that sensation process is their growth state. So they're focusing, an ISFP that's healthy is focusing on getting into the external world and being a part of the real world, touching, feeling, tasting, experiencing, getting in their body, being present to the moment, and getting out of that 10-year-old process, just like the ISTP, of speculation and wild theories that they're drawing conclusions you know, behind the scenes and then trying to project that in the outer world. They're actually in the outer world, getting the feedback that the world's providing. And one thing ISFPs struggle with, I think different than ISTPs, because that authenticity or introverted feeling process is so concerned with ethics and morality that a lot of should statements come from that. Here's how the world should be working. Here's how we should be showing up as humans. And that feels so real and so visceral on a very internal subjective space for the ISFP. If you're an ISFP, you know this is, it feels just right and wrong certain things for you. And often you can use that 10-year-old process to support what you feel is right or wrong by basically making up a philosophy of life that fits what feels right or wrong to you. And it may not play out in the real world. It may not actually be what's happening for real people in the real world. So a healthy ISFP doesn't create a philosophy and then try to project it outward. They actually experience life and they build their philosophies and their should statements based on how the world works, not the other way around. And I think this is this is the difference between someone that's struggling, still growing themselves as an ISFP, and someone who's really developed, someone's really centered and grounded as an ISFP. They're basing their philosophy on life and what they think is right or wrong or ethical on real life examples, real world feedback in real time. I think one of the ways you can really tell a healthy ISFP is that they don't get offended easily. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that ISFPs who are in that closed circuit loop of their dominant or driver process of introverted feeling and their 10-year-old process of introverted intuition, because they feel so strongly about their convictions and because they haven't really vetted how things work in the outside world as much, they're just looking for things to support that it's very easy to trigger offense, right? Like you've like you've hurt their feelings or you've offended a conviction of theirs. The more they get into extroverted sensing or sensation, the more open to input they are from the outside world, the less they'll be offended and have to manage their feelings of offense. They'll be more open to how, you know, to to the struggle of other people. They'll be more sympathetic to others on what other people are going through, not just what, not just how those people are impacting them, but rather being able to match the vibration of the other person, to be able to sympathize with them and really understand what's happening for them. And in that way, they, after they've pulled in that information, after they've been open to this input from sensation, 
then their perspectives process, that 10-year-old introverted intuition, can show up as, as insight into other people. It can really show up as insight. I'm thinking of a... Um, I think of an ISFP who works with teenagers a lot. And what's interesting is I don't know if I'd use this person as a general example of a truly healthy ISFP because when it comes to other adults, they actually get triggered pretty easily. They get offended by other adults very easily. And they shut up they shut off their inputs when it comes to other adults because they get offended so often. But they found their sweet spot of working with teenagers because they already feel like teenagers don't really know any better. So they give teenagers a pass. And so when they're talking to teenagers and counseling them, they don't shut off their input. They totally open themselves up to whatever the teenager has to say, and they don't get triggered by it. They don't get offended. And so when it comes to teenagers, this person is incredibly insightful because they're open to whatever the teenager has to say. They don't take it personally. They don't think the teenager is trying to offend them. And so in that way, because they've opened themselves up and they're not managing their emotional experience to how this other person is making them feel, they're completely in a like in tune with the other person's feelings, then they're able to use introverted intuition or perspectives to bring in a lot of insight into what's going on for this other person. And so they make an excellent counselor for teenagers. So when an ISFP is at the top of their game, I've noticed that they're not just thinking in terms of how is everybody else making me feel? Remember we talked about at the beginning, this idea of, you know, sort of that shot, that dispersed energy, that shotgun blast of introverted feeling or authenticity, where it's everybody else's responsibility to make me feel a certain way. That no longer becomes the issue or the, the, th- that's no longer a problem because they're using the co-pilot process of extroverted sensing and in that philosophical, well, that is whatever it is. They're open to new information. They're inputting information. And so it's not just about how they're feeling. It's about how everybody's feeling or sort of calibrating to other people's feelings as well to be able to really get into a sympathetic state, not taking the outside world's information as personal, but rather just accepting it and working with it. And in that way, they become very insightful. They use that perspectives process to really be able to see what's going on with other people as opposed to simply supporting whatever they're feeling and then projecting uh, ill intent or bad motive onto other or projecting responsibility onto other people for, you know, you offended me as if it's the other person's responsibility for how they feel. That just melts away. They just become present. They become centered. They become really good at what they're doing. And, you know, we talked about how they're frequently artists. They can be excellent performers, but they can be just as good at counseling if they really open up that sensation co-pilot. It can also be a, uh, an interest of theirs, an aspirational interest to be a counselor, somebody that helps other people shift perspective and see new ways and new possibilities. And I think ISFPs at their best make great counselors in that. They're taking in that actual data. They're actually taking in what the experience is for the other person, and they're giving good advice and insightful advice. And that's the narrative we would like to cast for you if you're an ISFP of you showing up in a healthy way. We think that's a really great expression of your personality type that transcends just the stereotypes of a certain aptitude or job role, for example. Now, one thing I want to mention before we move on to the INPs, even though this actually will apply to both of those types as well, is the ISTP three-year-old process or what's technically called the inferior process process or cognitive function is it it's a it's its technical name is extroverted feeling or we call it harmony. And so ISTPs when they're not at their best can struggle with relationships. Because the connective piece that part of them that helps connect to another person is a, a blind spot for them. They can be a little standoffish. They don't really care what you think of them. They're not really trying to connect with anybody else necessarily. And and connection is usually a surprise. When they actually do connect with another person, that's always a surprise for them. When they're at their best, though, when they're really in that space of, you know, being on purpose and open to information and ins- insight or that using perspectives to really up their game, I don't see that they have a lot of problems with relationships because they're just generally cool people. (laughs) Like they're cool. And so they end up attracting other cool people. They're steady. Yeah, they're steady. They're grounded. They're cool. They're chill. And so they end up not having a lot of problems with relationships necessarily. I mean, everybody obviously has problems with relationships in the sense that we all have challenges. Not necessarily problems, but we're all going to have challenges. But it's not like a major 
you know, soul sucking problem for them. <laughs> it's not like a, a, a yeah. wounding that they have to deal with. They're generally people who, you know, are cool enough that they attract other cool people. And so relationships are plenty. ISFPs, on the other hand, they lead with introverted feeling. And so their three-year-old process is extroverted thinking, which we have nicknamed effectiveness. So effectiveness is their blind spot. And what I've noticed with ISFPs is that when they're at the top of their game, they're so they're they're so busy. They're doing so many things. They're out in the outside world. They're in their sensation process. They're busy. They're industrious. And so while they might never be somebody who implements really you know complex systems and you know are man like maybe supervisors or managers of like departments. I mean usually ISFPs when they have to be in like like a management role over huge groups of people that usually is not their sweet spot that doesn't feel as good to them so they might never like really want to to go down that road necessarily however what i've noticed is that their industry industriousness makes them very effective like they get things done because they're so they're so engaged they're so in action they're doing you know what they do best and they're on they're again they're focused they're on mission they're doing the thing that's meaningful to them and like you said at the beginning of the podcast when an ip is on mission they're almost i mean they're just about unstoppable so a really healthy version of both of these types will make up for the blind spot of the inferior process uh, in a way that, you know, that they're not really dealing with this, like this problem over and over and over again. For the most part, that challenge is something that being in their other, you know, their other really strong processes makes up for. So let's shift gears. Let's talk about the intuitives, the INTP and the INFP personality types. What do they look like when they're showing up healthy? What's the narrative we're going to cast for you if you're an INTP or an INFP as a healthy expression of your personality type? So starting with INTPs, now they lead with the same driver process that ISTPs do, introverted thinking or what we call accuracy. Again, this is about what makes sense to the individual. It's subjective and its technical name is introverted thinking. So it's thinking done in the inward, in inside world, the inwardly turned thinking process. So what makes sense to the individual? It's analytical. It focuses on logic. And so how does like a really healthy INTP show up when they're using that co-pilot process to the best of their ability? Well, what can happen if you use this process of accuracy and you don't gain more information, you don't open yourself up to new possibilities you just stick with what you know, right, or what information you're familiar with, you could be coming to erroneous conclusions that make complete and total sense to you. And you look around at everybody else who may or may not be agreeing with you and the people who aren't agreeing with you, you think they're idiots. So there's a certain cynicism that comes with that, right? Like things that are super obvious to me, they make complete and total sense to me. Why aren't they making sense to everybody else? These people must be stupid. They must be idiots. And then you write everybody off. When an INTP is super healthy, they don't go to cynicism. They don't feel the need to correct everybody. They have completely embraced extroverted intuition as their co-pilot process or what we call exploration. Now, what extroverted intuition does is it asks what if. It's very possibilities oriented. There's a sense with this process that anything could happen. It's pretty exciting, actually, when you get into it. And so when you experience the outside world and you take in information, just like an ISTP does with extroverted sensing, you take in more information and then you also see patterns forming, new possibilities, new patterns. And these new possibilities and new patterns fuel the accuracy or introverted thinking process to think up even more cool stuff. And so then you become very influential. You've got all these new ideas popping around your head. You've got cool stuff to share with other people. And because extroverted intuition is possibilities oriented, there's a certain optimism that comes along with it. And so INTPs that are utilizing that driver and co-pilot process well become cheerful. They've got all these cool new insights to share with other people. They become cheerful and optimistic and life is cool and there's really great things to share with other people. And just like with all the other four IP types, this also relies on them or depends upon them 
having that dominant process or that driver process be focused, focused on a discipline, focused on something that's interesting to them, not disparate, not tr- not out there trying to prove everybody wrong about everything, but rather really working on something, working on something intellectual, working on something that is maybe a new framework that they've come up with that nobody's thought about. And so what happens is instead of getting caught in that loop that we've talked about before, that loop of going to the 10-year-old, in their case, it would be introverted sensing or what we call memory. Memory is very much about what ha- what they've seen before, the tried and true um, safety orientation. And it's also about you know repeating patterns. Instead of going there and staying in a safe space, right, or what what could be also called the um, the comfortable misery of an INCP <laughs> because you're sticking with the tried and true, but you're yeah. miserable, right? You're comfortable and miserable at the same time. Instead of going to that space, they stay optimistic, they stay cheerful, they stay excited about what they're learning and thinking and, and are able to influence others to understand. And then they use that memory process to create routine. They use it to basically supercharge their impact. If you've got something exciting to share with somebody else, but you have no actual way to, you know, like basically distribute it, right? If you have no platform to distribute it, if you have no business around this or no, you know, no discipline about around being able to write about it or whatever, then your reach is going to be pretty small. So what the memory process does is it helps them create routines. It makes sure that they're up every morning. It makes sure that they're feeding themselves well. It makes sure that they're attending to their health and their general fitness. It makes sure that they're getting up and going to work every day or doing whatever it is that helps their reach expand. And so the reach expands. So now they're even more cheerful and happy because now they have influence. Now they can help influence other people in these cool new ways of seeing things or, you know, their new you know, experiments or what they've discovered in the lab or, you know, whatever it is for the INTP, they're able to have a broader influential reach with whatever they're thinking about. And that's incredibly rewarding to the INTP. So INTPs at the top of their game are a lot more disciplined. They're a lot more focused on a goal and they're a lot more cheerful in general. And just like with that ISTP, you know, their three-year-old process is also extroverted feeling or harmony. And so INTPs that are not at the in a healthy space have a tendency, with, like with ISTPs that aren't healthy, to struggle with relationships and connection. But an INTP that's healthy, because they have that effusiveness and that cheerfulness and that excitement for whatever they're teaching the world, again, they generally don't have a lot of challenge. Or they have challenge, but they don't have problems with relationships. They generally are able to find people who love to talk to them and love to learn from them and teach them and and have those really great relationships. So it makes up for the blind spot of that three-year-old by helping them connect with others. Yeah, they don't have a cynicism around relationships. They have a possibility frame around people because people can be baffling to you as an INTP. People can be frustrating to you as an INTP. They seem like they're purposely myopic and purposely misunderstanding and being stupid sometimes to you. And I think if you have that possibility thinking of that ex, you know, extroverted intuition, that exploration process, you're seeing the possibilities and the good parts of people, and you're focused on that, not on the cynicism around people being myopic in their life. So I think that really helps you with your relationships to have that positive frame to show up. What about INFPs? Now, INFPs have the same growth, growth state, the same growth position. Uh, their co-pilot has the same process, I should say, of exploration. So an INFP that's growing is focused on that exploration, doing very similar activities, asking what if questions, just like the INTP. They're out in the outer world, making connections, finding new patterns, coming up with new ways of seeing the world, maybe new new philosophies or new frameworks, new models of understanding how the world works by asking those what if questions. And what does this do for the INFP? Well, that that driver process for INFPs, just like ISFPs, is authenticity, introverted feeling. And again, it's about what resonates with you internally. What is the subjective emotional truth for you as an INFP? And that is a very powerful, visceral experience for you. You you just know something is right or wrong for you based on how you feel internally. And it's not a lot of question in there. Like that's a clear indicator of this is morally or ethically wrong or this is morally or ethically right. And that extends out to things that aren't necessarily ethics or morals. That's like, what are you going to eat for lunch? Or where are you going to go shopping this afternoon? It just feels right to do this thing or it doesn't feel right to do this other thing. You just know that. And it's hard to explain that sometimes to other people. 
when an INFP or somebody who uses this process, uh, if they don't have a lot of experience in the world, it's not as crystal clear though. A lot of times, and, and you can verify this as an authenticity user, a lot of times when you go into a situation, you're not sure how you feel about it until after you've experienced it. Would you say that's accurate? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So what, well, I'm talking about for a healthy expression. Right. If the INFP is in the external world and asks us what if questions, that internal metric for understanding what is the thing that they're going to do becomes much clearer for them at a healthy expression of that. I guess I should have made that more clear. Probably sound like I was saying that in general terms across all all platforms, all things being equal. But general, generally, if they're growing and they're focused on growing that co-pilot process, how they're showing up in a healthy expression of that primary cognitive function of introverted feeling, authenticity, is that the INFP will have a very clear understanding of what the right course of action for them is subjectively. Yeah, and it's because they've had a lot of experiences. Exploration has encouraged them to go out and try new things. It's encouraged them to get out of their shell and go figure out the different possibilities in the outside world. So they've put themselves in situations that help them recalibrate how they feel about it. So then the next time they go experience something similar, they can pull from the 10-year-old memory process and go, hey, I've been here before. I think I know how I feel about this. And so that helps them create convictions. But it also helps them, like with the ISFP, expand their frame a little bit. It helps them understand that it's not just how things are making them feel, but they're also now focused on other people's feelings as well. And they're able to create more of a sense of sympathy for others. So again, there's not this sense that other people are responsible for how I'm feeling and looking to the person who is making them feel a certain way. There's a sense that they're responsible for it. And the more exploration they do, the more the more equipped they are to use that emotional Aikido on themselves to be able to really control their emotion or get themselves to the space that they want to be. And so the more exploration they do, the more cheerful they get too. The more, and, and INFPs are not usually considered as dour or as cynical as say an unhealthy INTP would be. But I would say that IN, INFPs that aren't super healthy have a tendency to be very, um, they have a tendency to be like sort of down, right? There's like this, maybe an emo feel about them. And that makes sense if everything is about how you're feeling, but you're stuck in ruts because you're in that closed yeah. circuit loop with that 10-year-old process of memory. But the more you're using exploration, again, that's possibility sinking. That's what if. That's an anything could happen phase. And so the convictions, like you mentioned, the, con the, the convictions get clearer because they've put themselves in situations where they've really been able to test how they feel about things. The convictions get clearer. Their purpose gets clearer. They're on mission they're open to new suggestions on how to go about that. And then just like with the INTP, they can use that memory process, that 10-year-old process to create discipline and routines that help them have a better and bigger impact. And it's you can also use that memory process to access the emotions you want to have around things. I know a lot of INFPs, they can struggle with feeling like emotions are happening to them sometimes in that it, they feel so strongly about something. How do I get myself out of maybe a negative emotional rut? How do I fix that for myself? I have a, I, I would consider a very healthy INFP friend of mine who, what he's done with his memory process is he's created musical playlists on his iPod or his iPhone. And if he wants to get an emotional state, he relies upon music he already is familiar with in a certain playlist He'll play that for himself to put himself in a, an emotional state that he wants to be in. He's created an emotional routine around getting the emotion he wants. So if he's got to maybe do something that's going to take some energy, some extroverted energy for him, and he knows he's got a playlist that'll give him that energy boost, an emotional framework and like purpose and intention for that, he'll actually play that playlist of music and get himself into the emotional state he wants to be in. Yeah, I think the really healthy IFPs, both the types understand that how they feel is their responsibility and yeah. they take responsibility for that and then they become just this i mean all the ifps that i've known that have been really healthy have felt so steady to me they're not anxious they don't feel the sense of you know like like stuff is just happening to them and they're out of control they have a groundedness and a centeredness about them that really shows that they understand that they're responsible for how they feel 
and they are focused. They're on target. They're on mission. They're using they're using that conviction piece for something positive and good to make a difference in the world and to better the lives of other people, either through counseling or through being on a big mission or whatever it is, even if it's small with the people around them or big in like a me- you know a major change the world sort of way. It doesn't really matter as long as you know they've got that centeredness about them. And I've I've noticed that with I um I. ITPs as well, INTPs and ISTPs. It's that centeredness that's really the sign of health. Yeah, and I think we, you know, we hinted at it that motivation piece at the beginning. If you see a motivated IP, I don't care what IP type they are, that's usually them showing up in a healthy way. The IFPs are managing their emotions. They are motivated because they found the emotion they want that will match the thing they desire. So they've gotten themselves into an emotional state that will get them to their goals. And they've managed that for themselves. They're not relying on anyone in the outside world to motivate them. It's an internal motivation and they figured out hacks and routines to get them in that space. And I think if you see a motivated ITP, someone that leads with accuracy, it makes sense for them to be going for their goals. They found ways for it to make sense for them to expand the framework of what is logical and makes sense for them internally, subjectively. And it just makes sense to go toward that goal now for them. Yeah, and they've avoided cynicism. They've avoided cynicism. They're cheerful. They're happy. And they're focused on something. And I think that focus, like it's, it's like setting a compass on the open seas toward the land you want to go to. Other ships might come by. There might be waves and storms. It might throw you off course for a minute or two or a day or two, depending on how long that storm is. But you get back, you reset the compass, and you keep going for the goal you're after. You keep going for the motivation that you're you're directed toward, and you manage that for yourself. And that's something I think that a healthy expression for I, IPs, the way healthy yeah. IPs show up in the world. Yeah, and then INFPs as well, just like the ISFPs. If they're on mission, if they've got that focus, that conviction, if they are at the height of their health, they don't tend to struggle with that three-year-old extroverted thinking as much, the effectiveness. Again, they might not be middle management. They'll never want to be that, but they will get things done. They will be motivated. They will be industrious, and they will have the impact that they want. So with all the IP types, actually with every type, the healthier you are, the more you're really showing up with your your driver and co-pilot process super healthy, and then using that 10-year-old to supplement, as opposed to going straight to the 10-year-old, using the 10-year-old as a supplement for the other processes, then the the blind spot of the three-year-old doesn't trip you up as much. You've generally covered the base of that. And so it's not as, it's not something that's going to hamstring you as much. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Are you an IP? Have we said something that resonated with you that you were like, yeah, that's that's me to a, to a T. I love how you guys explain that. I want to hear your feedback. If you've got questions, more nuanced questions around what some of the things we've talked about, we'd love to hear from you as well. Come over to personalityhacker.com. You can leave a comment directly under this podcast. You can also do a ton of research. There's free resources all over the website about all of these types. You can read more in depth on them. You can listen to audio, watch video, or even get a starter kit. If this is your personality type and you take the test, you come out that that type, you can go ahead and invest in a starter kit that explains some of this in more detail. And some of the growth positional exercises we recommend for you to grow your personality. You can also join us on social media. We have a growing community of like minds, facebook.com forward slash personality hacker, twitter.com forward slash personality hack. We want your voice to be heard there as well. If you enjoyed this podcast, you can subscribe to us on iTunes and various Android platforms. And if you're feeling a sense of reciprocity or you're just in a giving spirit, if you'd leave us a rating and review, that really helps us out. Yeah. My name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. Next week, we're going to be talking on the last piece of how types show up healthy. We're going to be talking about the IJs in the Myers-Briggs system. So stay tuned for that. And we'll talk with you on the next Personality Hacker Podcast. Mm -hmm.